COVID-19 has been a very major disruption in the international system. We have not seen a crisis like this since the Second World War. Both our countries have not been an exception to the adverse impact of COVID-19. We have lost lives. We have also lost livelihoods. COVID-19 has, if there is one thing it has brought to our attention, is the need for greater cooperation at the bilateral level, the regional level, and international. Our Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, took the initiative to bring the leaders of the South together soon after the crisis struck in order to work out arrangements for regional problems. A soft emergency response fund was created. We are very grateful for Nepal's generous contribution of $1 million to this fund. That fund and that meeting also ensured very extensive networking and cooperation of our health experts on how to deal with the crisis. We've also seen a number of initiatives uh, by which we assisted each other in the form of health equipment, therapeutics, test kits. Today, the remdesivir vials that I was able to symbolically hand over to the Honorable Foreign Minister is a very important therapeutic in the treatment of those who are suffering from COVID-19 COVID virus. At the international level, Prime Minister Modi took the initiative to convene for the first time a G20 extraordinary summit to go into an issue that G20 has never done before. How to deal with the humanitarian crisis. And the Prime Minister, when he addressed the G20 at that time, stressed the need for a human-centric globalization. In other words, organizations like the G20 need to look at the needs of humanity. India is today the largest producer of vaccines in the world. We have tied up with many of the major vaccine manufacturers, whether it is AstraZeneca in the UK, whether it is companies in the US, whether it is Putin 5 from Russia. The Prime Minister has made it clear that we will ensure that the vaccine is not just for the people of India, but for all humanity. We will make this vaccine accessible and affordable. And it goes without saying that the first priority will be for our closest neighbors, our friends, like Nepal. I had the opportunity to discuss this with the Honorable Foreign Minister, Honorable Foreign Secretary. And we will put our health ministries our regulators in touch with each other to ensure that when this vaccine enters the market, when this vaccine is available, that Nepal will also have the fullest benefit of this vaccine. I want to convey uh, my very grateful thanks to the government of Nepal for hosting me and my delegation. Um, I I did intend to come in soon after I took over at one city for COVID-19 intervene. Our bilateral relations are age-old and historic. We have something which very few countries have. We have civilization ties that come not from century but millennia. Even during the worst period of the COVID pandemic, the very, very strictly imposed lockdown, we ensured that trade, essential supplies, and commodities continue to flow between our two countries. And today, we are looking at the possibility of taking our relationship further, faster, and to greater heights. I thank the Honorable Foreign Minister for his time, for his courtesy, and for his very, very strong contribution to the relationship. And we certainly look forward to working closely with our colleagues in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, in the government of Nepal, in taking this relationship. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.